Hello, Zakir Hussain with you and the topic is plunging ranula. First, let me explain to you what does a ranula mean. The oral cavity, the saliva is mainly produced by three important glands. The parotid gland, submandibular gland and sublingual gland. Other than these glands, you have so many uh, lakhs of mucin secreting small glands in the oral cavity. This mucin which is produced by these glands, it gives a coating inside the oral cavity and one, whatever food we take, it gives a coating of the food also so that it, it helps us in swallowing, the oral phase of swallowing. So ranula, it means that when this gland, mucin secreting gland, the mouth of the uh, gland, the duct is getting blocked. What happens is the secretion, instead of coming in the oral cavity, it, uh, it gets blocked inside. So what happens, it keeps on collecting, just like uh, it look like a uh, balloon filled with water. It keeps on collecting, keeps on increasing. Such collection of, uh, collection of mucin of a gland inside is called as a ranula. So same ranula which is there in the, or in the floor of the mouth in this part, here in the floor of the mouth, floor of the mouth and instead of representing here, it plunges down, it, it tracks down into the neck and represents in the upper part of the neck. So the, the ranula which is seen in the floor of the mouth, instead of in the oral cavity, it plunges down. This type of ranula is called as a plunging ranula. And Usually, it is seen between the age of 20 and 30 and it is seen only on one side. So, the main complaint of the patient will be, they will be complaining that there is a swelling in the upper part of the neck, like how you see in this picture. This is the swelling in the neck, which is slowly increasing in size. Suppose, if it, this gets infected, then they may have pain and there will be discoloration of the skin too. Suppose it is not infected, there will be a swelling in the upper part of the neck which is slowly increasing in size. And suppose the same patient here, they have a swelling in the oral cavity in the floor of the mouth also and if it is bigger in size, they have problem in speech and they have problem in swallowing too. So this picture I have already shown you and on examination, we will find a single big swelling in the upper part of the neck which is called as a submandibular region and the skin over the swelling will be smooth and there is no discoloration also and there will be no pain on examination also and we like to see the oral cavity also like how you see in this patient there is a swelling in the upper part of the oral cavity and but there is no swelling in the floor of the mouth it's free floor of the mouth is free now coming to the investigation and there is one more thing which i want to tell you on examination that that swelling it is fluctuant like how you feel the balloon filled with water same way it will be fluctuant and suppose we have a torch light uh, shown on one side, the whole cyst will be shining from inside. That is called as translucency. That is one test to show that it is cystic swelling. So the yeah, single big swelling in the submandibular region which is fluctuant and is translucent. Now uh, coming to the investigation. To start with we would like to do uh, an ultrasound of the neck which shows a well-defined uh, lesion, a cystic lesion which is seen in the sublingual and the submandibular space. Now when you do a CT scan or a MRI, which is MRI is much better, which you do a CT scan, this, these findings of the ultrasound can be reconfirmed. And suppose it is infected, then the total count, the blood count will be higher. This is a CT scan of the same patient where you can see a single uh, cystic lesion in the submandibular gland here. And this view also and let me show same patient let me show you the video also this is the swelling single cystic swelling so this will be the finding and once it is confirmed the only treatment is going to be excision of the complete gland now when you have decided excision of the gland one thing to be uh, noted is that this patient can present either in the infective stage or maybe just with uh, uh, pl as plunging ranula. So we can divide as plunging ranula complicated 
with uh, means with secondary infection or pr pr plunging ranula uncomplicated means it's just plunging ranula without any secondary infection suppose they come with in an infective stage in that case we have to admit them give a full course of antibiotic and put in a needle and aspirate all the abscess out and treat the uh, infective stage and once they are free of uh, all the infection we can repose them we can pose them for surgery after a gap of one month that's how we manage suppose they come in a non infective stage uncomplicated stage then we can straight off go for the elective surgery as excision of the plunging ranula trans cervical approach when means outside approach not intraorally out from outside now we have decided for surgery and during admission first we'll take a concern from you and what is the uh, uh, diagnosis will be written in that and what surgery we are planning to do the surgery will be like how i mentioned before excision of the plunging ranula by trans cervical approach and what are the complications of the surgery so you go through the whole thing read it properly the patient should sign it uh, sign it write your name and the date and the doctor and the witness who is there with you they will also sign write their name and put the date now let me tell you in brief about the complication this part which is called a submandibular region it has got three important nerves one important nerve which supplies the angle of the mouth second one important nerve which supplies the sensation of the tongue third important nerve which supplies the tongue itself so in in case the nerve which supplies the angle of the mouth is damaged when the patient smiles post operatively if it is damaged the angle will not be equal on both side it will be deviated on the side which is uh, which is the nerve, nerve is cut which side is cut that side will get deviated second one if suppose that nerve which is supplies the tongue is movement is involved is uh, transected or cut the tongue movement may get affected and the last one the sensation if that nerve is gone then the sensation that anterior part of the tongue will be gone and likewise there is an important artery there if it bleeds intraoperatively of course we can manage it may bleed postoperatively also so these are the important uh, complications of surgery it is better to know but it doesn't happen but it is better always better to know now uh, concern has been taken with all the investigations done necessary investigations done to show that you are fit for to be taken to the operation theater with all this investigation you have to meet the physician they will examine you give a clearance for uh, for surgery likewise you have to uh, meet the anesthetist they will examine you and they will give you a few advice and uh, they will give a clearance for anesthesia so next day uh, you are going to be posted as a selective case so prior one day prior from midnight you are not supposed to drink or eat anything so next day surgery approximately it takes about 2 to 2 and a half hours say suppose by 9:30 you 9 o'clock you enter the theater by 12 o'clock you can back, you can be back in your room or the ward so this is the surgery so where we'll put an incision this is the incision this is just a landmark then there's an incision we deepen the incision this is a uh, deepen the incision expose the whole cyst uh, whole ranula remove it completely and put a small drain so that the idea of putting a drain is that we don't want any blood to be collected inside in case post operatively if it bleeds then we have to reopen the hole the sutures and we have to evacuate the hematoma and uh, again we have to do a uh, suturing so better to avoid all this we put a small drain which will be removed the subsequent day morning so once the surgery is done and back in the room of the ward you are not supposed to eat or drink for next 4 hours meanwhile iv fluids will be going on and the staff nurse on duty she'll check your vitals and temperature and at the same time she'll check whether there is any soaking of the wound whether there is any pain any swelling which is increasing in size all these will be checked and if it is so they'll inform the duty doctor or the concerned surgeon at the same time iv antibiotics will be going on and the pain killers too so this is how it looks like apostrophe when you come to the room there'll be a bandage here so this subsequent next day morning the drain will be removed and they may apply such a pressure bandage again for two more days or some surgeons they prefer a very small steri strip to be applied over the wound it can be either of this both way is acceptable depends upon the the surgeon and uh, the final finding when he when he is very confident there is no bleeding they they may put only a small steri strip that will be comfortable enough and you will be discharged so discharge advice is going to be antibiotic for 5 to 7 days 
which you have to take after food and painkiller regularly for three days. After that, you take the, uh, take the painkiller only if it is painful and dressing uh, to be changed after three days and you have to come for su suture removal. You have to, your first review is going to be after seven days when you come for suture removal. That particular day, we'll remove the sutures and we'll keep the uh, area, make the area clean and we'll give you the biopsy report too. So and after that, you need to come only after one month. So meanwhile, after seventh day, for next five days, please be careful, don't overextend your ne neck. Don't, don't over uh, turn to any particular side. Normal activities is, is okay, but don't over extend your neck. That is the only thing. And there is no other medications other than these what I have mentioned. So this is how we, uh, this is how we manage plunging ranula. Thank you so much.